Thank you, channel. My name is Brad, Supercoach Pro. Today, we are doing a round 10 Supercoach team review. We went big this week. Um, really surprising, actually. Um, we've gone 2505. Season ranks actually climbing back in now. We're 8,519. Um, just had a look at someone's video before, and there were only 170 points in front of me, and they ranked 3.5K. So there's not a lot between 8K and 3K. It's actually like literally a player and a half if one player goes big, like a 150 score. I'll be in that top 3,000 potentially next week if I can get my uh, primos firing like they did this week. Uh, note the tipping down below. I haven't been doing tipping since round two, so don't worry. I'm not a really bad tipper. Um, but, yeah, now season rank of 8,519. And total scores looking all right. Um, and, yeah, it was probably the week to fire for me because I had some mediocre weeks. I haven't really felt bad about the side like on paper it's been looking pretty good i've been trading pretty well it's more just i've just more had bad luck i suppose 11 out of 11 league wins so you'll take that um i'll go into my trade thoughts this early but it's a little bit hard to sort of figure because i did last minute trades again i didn't bring short and i didn't bring fisher in i grabbed bruce revel last minute because i saw he was named on the wing and then i also saw that Five minutes ago on the bench before the 7.30 game, um, he wasn't named on the bench again. So I thought, all right, he must be straight on the field. So I wanted to maximise his points because I thought if he's actually starting on the field, we might be okay against Richmond. Um, and then the other thing was my VC failed in Dacos. So I wanted Ryan because I thought he'd go 160 this week. So I got a little bit scared about that and went Ryan over Zorko. But I haven't really been as hot on Zorko as what I have been Ryan. So, yeah, anyway, that's the short of it. Um, so you can see there on the left, um, Ryan was captain. I uh, didn't get a lot of kickouts because St. Kilda didn't really spray it much and it wasn't a lot of points for him because it was just played in between the sort of 50-metre arcs um, up and down the wings a lot of the play when I'd catch a bit of the game. Um, but, look, a 122, hindsight's one of the thing. Captain him, a lot of people in the stream, I was saying the other night too, like, you know, everyone was going, oh, do I take the Ryan or do I go C? Because Gorn's going to go huge against Williams. Um, and everyone took the punt on Gorn, which I probably would have done the same thing, to be honest. Um, you just never know with these picks, but 120 has always been pretty safe anyway. So you do got to risk it for the biscuit. So I probably would have done the same thing, but Ryan sort of got me out of a bit of a hole or else I probably would have went Gorn and lost 20 points or whatever. But you'll take that. Um, paid way overs for Ryan, but I'm okay with that because at least now I can watch a free O game without getting annoyed at the opposition team kicking her behind. Um, yeah, Dacos uh, officially probably on seek right now, applying to be a butcher because he just cannot kick in that game whatsoever. Um, was just getting turned over and marked the opposition all day. His handballs were good and his possessions were good, but if he didn't have 40 touches, he wouldn't have turned up. And got scaled down a little bit at the end of the game too. Um, so, yeah, it was a weird game. Like, you had PBs for clearances and stuff, but you don't get points for clearances. So, anyway, Dacos is whatever. He's pretty highly owned. Still averaging 119, so it's a good pick. Um, Houston, 148. Finally, he fired because the last three weeks that I had him for, he'd been really mediocre. He was averaging like 100 in my side after paying 597 for him. Ooh, he's got north this week too. So, I bought him in. When did I buy him in? I think I bought him in round seven. So he got a 107, 93, and 89. I was pretty, like, flat about that. So he's, he's made up for it with that 148. Huge game, kicked three goals. Um, so, yeah, happy with that pick now, but still probably wasn't 597 worth. So good pick up if you want to grab him. Got the good buy, although I've kind of stuffed myself in that buy. If you have a look at round 13 buy players, I'm missing a lot of primos. Um, one, two, three, Four, five, six. So probably not the greatest. I probably can't grab another Freo or Port player. Um, but I don't really care because I've got enough rookies that might be playing by then. Let's hope. She's all midfield role. Um, how did he go? I didn't really catch too many Sunday games, to be honest. I was feeling a little bit uh, flat. Um, so I didn't even do a live stream. So I do apologise. But sometimes when you're just not up for it, you just don't feel like doing a live stream when you're not feeling 100%. Um, so what did he get? You go to his fantasy stats here. I don't know if you guys know this. Um, if you've got Supercoach Gold, it is, and it'll tell you what he had possession-wise. So he had 30, 32 touches, quick math, nine marks, four tackles, two free kicks against, and still managed a 117. 
So you take that, hopefully he's found his feet in the midfield and maybe he's not a trade out, but he probably was more of a trade out at 600 gay, um, in all honesty. Um, but we'll see how we go. Hopefully he holds price and doesn't go below 500 K and have a few stinkers. Uh, young bounce back game. I can't get a good read on him. He has a really good game or a really average game. Um, don't know. I'd probably bring Nick Martin ahead of him for the same sort of, oh, they're probably not the same price anymore, but I should have went Martin over him, regardless of Martin playing since down forward. Um, Young has to do a lot to get decent 120 and 130, which is really annoying because you can see when he doesn't have the possessions, he just doesn't get scored very well. But he does take a lot of marks around the ground from what I've noticed. Um, Stewart, yeah, I hate this pick. I think you guys know clearly um, on my live streams that I absolutely hate Tom Stewart as a pick this year. Um, I don't think anyone can change my mind about how I feel. When you own a play from the start of the year, you, you, you keep a hot eye on him. He'll probably go huge in the Richmond game, then everyone will buy him then. But 489k, three round averages. What is it? I feel like it'd be 85. Um, does it tell you? See, I didn't even know that, and I just took a punt, and it's 87. So I just had a feeling that's how bad he's been traveling. He's got a five round average of 86, so I don't even bother going there. I know his value, but don't do it yourself. I'm. He's a hard watch. You can't cop a tag. Um, and then the midfield sort of hit and miss everywhere you can see there. Sarong 118, consistent as ever. Glad I had him and Butters in. Um, I think I bought him in round two, just sideways, because I thought they'll be one and two primos, and it turned out they actually pretty much are in the midfield. Um, if not, they are. Um Consistent, got a tag and still managed a 118. Uh, and then Butters, yeah, clutch at the last quarter there, like a 60-point quarter, uh, and managed a 127. So, yeah, uh, a fantastic picks. Um, and if you don't have them, you, you probably don't want to be anti-potting them for the rest of the year because they haven't really dropped stickers, to be honest. I mean, um, I don't know if Sarong's gone below 100. I feel like he, he hasn't, potentially. Okay, one score of 94, you arrange your scores. They're insane. And what's Butters been doing? <sighs> Butters, only two games under the ton, and one was a 98, so they're just really good picks. It's probably why they're so highly priced still. Bond, 93. Yeah, I, I can. I, I don't really feel comfortable VCing or seeing Bond, particularly not seeing. VC, you might be get away with it, but... Every week I try to or want to go for a VC or C on a bond is it the wrong week to do it. Um, and I can't work what it is. I think the whole Uber situation actually affects his scoring. So, look, I didn't think he'd score a lot against Giants because uh, Callan Ward was playing on him, giving him a bit of tag. And Bont's not really great at shaking the tag, to be honest. So, a bit concerning for Bont. But, um, I mean, Sydney also tagging now. Jordan's tagging, uh, what's his name? Walsh, so got to watch out for these tag matchups potentially because um, they do affect your VC and C options. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> took Mill, I don't know what happened there, 97. Maybe the conditions didn't suit him very well, but like everyone else went off. I don't know why Mill didn't. Um, maybe just needs to get on the scoreboard more because he doesn't kick enough goals for a mid, to be honest. Um, and he's probably more handball friendly from what I've noticed in games as well, but Look, it is what it is. Before this, he was like seven for eight, Frank midfielder um, for for points. So I'm not too concerned about Miller. I think he's still a good pick and his fixtures all right. Uh, Steel, yeah, hot and cold. Uh, no strapping on the knee, but pulls out an 86. I feel like the game was a little bit too fast for him sometimes. So um, not too sure what to go with Steel, but I'm just going to hold him and hope he comes good. Oliver, 124. I sort of... This is why I bought him at the low price the week before. And even though he scored 87 and everyone's like, no, don't, you know, he's not worth it. I would have still grabbed him this week, uh, even after his 87, because that's how good he looked on the eye test. I had someone trolling me on Twitter about it. I was blocked him because I was like, you don't even know what you're talking about. Um, He's like, yeah, can you call yourself pro? It's like, mate, at least I watch your games. What are you watching? Your peanut. So anyway, um, Shout out to that peanut, but yeah, Oliver's good now. Like he's he 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 used the eight week block as his preseason basically. That's why he looks so unfit at the start. 
But look, he, what did he do number wise? I know it's only West Coast; it's an easy sort of match up for him, I suppose, in the midfield because you've only got Harley Reid, which I want to talk about in a second too. Um, that I was actually going to trade him out, so I got absolutely kissed by holding Reid. But minutes on ground, ninety seven. Okay, so they're pretty good. They're not the they, they've come really good actually, to be honest. Like that's his third or fourth equal equal third highest time on ground. So. Uh, and what is his stats? Was it 30 touches? You'd assume it probably would be there at the bounce. Um, for some reason, it's not working at the moment. Anyway, um, I might not delve on to Oliver, but I still think he's a, not a bad M8 if you wanted to go there. Reed, what a game um, from him. Seriously, Break even to 59 now. Like he could get to 500k. Do you keep him because he's a 4 9 player? Oh, now I don't know. Maybe you do. I'm actually you're gonna have to hold him throughout the buyers. He's got a he's got a good fixture too. Adelaide, St Kilda, North Melbourne, Essendon, Hawthorne. Maybe you just keep him and hope he's the Sheasel. And he plays North again. He's a different character at home too. I know that's an, what's that? The 63. So that's not great. But he's got three tons. All his tons have come from the one venue. All come from Optus. Interesting. Now, I was playing at home. How many home games has he got for the rest of the season? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. Something to think about there. I don't know. You, you probably do keep him at F7 and just <clears throat> um, upgrade around him and hope he's a. F7 for the year, potentially. Torn about that, actually. I see how you go with trades late in the year, but he's someone you could hold. Sharp's been absolutely um, filling a role for MA. Everyone's filled up their midfield about two weeks ago, I noticed, and he's actually done a fine job as an MA. I've been sort of lucky with my rookies that I've had. Like, they're not the worst MA in the world to have in the last three weeks. He's three-round average. What have we got for three-round average? Like, it could be worse. You could be having a primo like Tom Green and stuff that's had those five injury, you know, that five in his injury game, then pulls out a 90-something. Like, he's probably out average um, Green in the last three weeks anyway, if you include that five. So, three-round average of 89. So, kind of been kissed a little bit there, but well, that's what happens when you do your research on the rookies and don't go Carroll over Sharp, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, a bit of luck, but a bit of smartness in that. So, I do feel good about that. Um, bench is dead as heck, though, so not going to be a good time going forward. Gone, um, yeah, 109. It is what it is. I, I had a feeling Bobby Williams would be a little bit restrictive. Um, everyone always thinks, oh, West Coast match up far out, throw the sea on him. But, hmm, it's interesting. Bobby Williams is no beat up in the ruck department, despite of how much you don't rate him. So interesting. And then it was probably the week of the pod, um, pod VC options like a Houston or a Jackson, which would have been really ballsy to do, but sometimes you got to take those punts and that's what your VC probably wise on is one of those guys instead. Jackson, so Iraq, look, he's averaged 104 because I had him since the start of the season. So it's been a good F6. A lot of people death riding him, but he's actually a good pick considering what he's done for me, you know, being able to fill in that role because Sweet was dropped. Jackson's been handy in the fact that when I had an R3 I wanted to use as a cash grab and points on field, I've been able to swing Jackson in there to sort of keep that spot warm. <laughs> so he's been – he's such an underrated pick. You can death ride him as much as you want, but if he didn't have that forward and ruck DPP, he would, he would be useless. Um, but in this case, he's probably been my most underrated pick for what he's done. Now, I know there's a lot of 90s and stuff in there, but considering the forward line shocking and your Kernos and Mackay's are doing the same things and Clyde Wells and all those sort of players, um, he's a good pick because it's Heaney, Flanders, Zorko and Daylight, and Jackson's probably the next best thing. So great pick, and I, I rate it. I still rate it for 500K. And Darcy is never going to play a whole season when he was injured, you know, pre-season and whatever else and start of the season, et cetera. Like, he's never going to get a full gig. As soon as I knew... He wasn't fully fit. That was the ideal reason to bring in Jackson because he just knew he wouldn't get his body right. So pat on the back for myself for not anti-potting something as stupid as a solo ruck move because, yeah, that, that actually grinds my gears that people thought it'd be a bad bad pick. Um, anyway, probably getting a little bit overhyped about Jackson, but just 
got to get excited about the stuff. And I was about to do one of these ones, but I won't. Anyway, overexcited about Jackson. Um, Heaney, 121. Yeah, he's been really good for me. Uh, started him as well. Same thing. Finally got the midfield role after 10 years of being at Swans or whatever it's been. So good on your horse for finally putting a position, a player in a position after a decade. Um, should have done it about five years ago, but you're a nuffy, so whatever. Flanders, 127. Um, yeah, super consistent. I don't know how he's not over 600,000, considering I don't think he's dropped below the ton. And then Wilson, 75. Ooh, interesting. He's hit his break even, so you could probably trade him. Yeah, 76 break even. This is where I'm struggling this week is I don't know whether to hold a Wilson, hold a Reed, hold a Darcy, because you look at my side, my forward line fired for, for rookies anyway. Like 84 for Darcy, brilliant pick. Like He's going to get the 400K, Combin an 80, so he's gone from a 98 to an 80. People hated him too, and I'm like, I don't know what you're seeing in the game, but he looks good on the eye, despite his 50s and 60s as pulling out. And despite him looking injured almost every every 10 seconds of the game, he has a way, intercept mark, just to have those good games. And all he needed was a little bit more possession. So you can have a look at the correlation between that. So this is 11 disposal game and only five marks. And all he needs is, you know, 13, 16 possessions, give him nine marks, and the opposition just bombed into him. When a team doesn't lower their eyes, he's the one waiting there clunking him. He's always been a good mark, Combin. So never hated the pick. Do I get concerned he has to make nine marks to get a, a juicy score? I would a bit, but if he can get his possessions up, his kick to handball ratio is pretty good. So um, all he needs is a good start and probably a few less free kicks against it, and we're, we're, we're going all right. So I like Combin for now. And Revel, yeah, that was a weird one. It was him or Sullivan. On paper, Sullivan looked better. Um, job security, I, I still don't know between the two of them. Would I be paying 160 for Revel? Absolutely not. I'd probably be going Richards this week instead. Um, because he's got such low disposals too. For what he does, I know he, he kicked a really good goal outside 50. I stopped watching the game. I actually ended up watching the St. Kilda and Fremantle game instead because that Brisbane and Richmond game was... A hard watch, like, I don't even know. I think I could get a game there right now, honestly. Um, 73, but he doesn't need a lot of the ball. 86 minutes time on ground, that's way better than the 68 and the 74. So at least Fags gave him more faith. And again, I can't go into the fantasy stats to look. Oh, now I can. So maybe it was just the marks that went up. But still, his possessions aren't high. You're looking at a 13, 15, and a 12 game. If he can get that to 20, he's turning up every day of the week. He had a free kick against, still scores 73. Wow. Yeah, anyway, good pick, DPP. Um, I never even spoke about bringing him in, actually. If I was going to bring in a rookie, it would have been Sal, but like I said, saw him named on the wing. Trades going into the week, or I have no idea. Um, may as well call me Noah, because I've got no idea. Um. Also doing a live stream with Shorty on Wednesday night, um, around 8-ish, probably 8.30 by the time I get, get sorted, I'd say. Um, so that should be good. Um, haven't seen a duo like that since Cousins and Judd. So that'll be, that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Shorty, if you're watching, um, should be a very fun time. I already saw Jonah's comment on your video too. That man is wild. Um, something about the house, man, or something like that. And you reckon we should get the bench press set up? Jonas, Jonas, Jonas. Always, always trolling. So anyway, um, where is the trade that I'm looking at? 6.07. Um, and yes, I shaved my head. So if you think I look like Justin Timberlake, just let me know in the comments. Just kidding. I probably wish. From 20 years ago, not Justin Timberlake now. He's 50-something years old. Um. Collingwood. Where are you? Why can't I find him? I'm fumbling. I got I distracted myself. Where is he? I don't know what I've done. Anyway, it's Richard's in and then a primo. Probably if <sighs> Will Graham doesn't get picked, you probably think he won't get picked for a while. Uh, especially after West, um, 
Gold Coast winning. So that's a huge concern there. And you probably need players playing over the buyers. Now, Richards has taken Elliott's spot at the moment. So um, I feel pretty confident in that for at least a month over the buyers. Um, and then Will Hoskin Elliott's done a hammy. And then someone else, I can't remember. But <laughs> I've been looking at forwards particularly – um, I've loved Harry Mackay, but Kerno or Jai is my toss up, really. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't mind fixing that forward line now rather than later. Um, Kerno's three round average of 79 and 83, not great. Five round average for Cardwell is 96. Mm, and he's got the DPP factor. Probably Jai. I mean, he's an absolute pod. Probably Roy. Uh, Parrish has done a calf again. The play is Richmond, which he will smoke Richmond. His scores, what have his scores been like? Three tons and three nineties. And that must have been a sub game or something, 61 minutes. Hopefully he wasn't injured then. Did he play around nine? He did, yep. So three games below 80, three tons and three nineties, as opposed to Kerno. What's Kerno done? Uh, I don't know who I want. Did Kerno beat up in bad teams to do it? North Melbourne, Adelaide, Melbourne, Geelong. Actually decent good sides in there, apart from North. Sorry, something just popped out of my curtain. I thought it was my cat. Interesting. Maybe I don't look about history because it's about the same. Like he's got four tons as opposed to three. Instead of two nineties, Codwell's has got three. Hmm. He's got Gold Coast. Has he played Gold Coast and that? He's got a lot of games at home though. How how does he do at Marvel? Maybe you got to look at the venue. Well, Marvel he does well. MCG. Okay. Okay, but he's got Gold Coast, Port, Essendon, Geelong. A hard game potentially. I don't know what to think of the matchups for these. What's his what's his history like? Okay, he likes Gold Coast, he likes Port, doesn't like Essendon. What is Jai like? What's his home games like? Like, does his venue make a difference? So Marvel, he scores between an 83 and a 103. MCG, hard to get a gauge because it's so far variance and he only, yeah, I don't know. What's his home games like? Whoa. Okay, he's got a lot of home games too. You got Richmond and West Coast in that block as well, though. Mm, probably leaning towards his fixture more than Kerno's. He's got the round 14 by. So maybe it's dry. Uh, how would it look? The DPP certainly helps too if I need to cover a midfield spot potentially. Mm, I'm I'm very uncertain about this. But it does fix up my really bad forward line. And it also means Common goes down back, so I don't have to excuse me, always rely on him to score. At least he can be emergency if there is a laid out, which I always do get worried about laid outs. Then it brings, where does it bring Breville? Ooh, probably means I can loop. Does it mean I can loop the forward line or not? Or the midfield? If Rogers doesn't get named, I can actually loop the sharp game with Rogers because I don't think Rogers will get picked. Interesting. I could do this. So I've got cover there, cover there. I think Garcia will come back into the side. He he did well on the weekend. He smashed Richmond VFL side, which we've probably got two VFL sides at the moment. We've got no forward on cover. Hopefully Sweet comes back. Let's have a look what it would be like potentially. Surely Sweet gets a gig back now. If that happens, then Jackson goes to the forward on. Can we loop now with Jones as well, potentially? So do we got Port? No. North? No. Carlton? No. Flanders? No. We can loop Richards if we wanted to. And then 
Oh, we actually got whipped Darcy. I'm an idiot. Hmm. That's interesting. We could definitely do that. That gives me a lot of options. I can whip MA and F6 this week if Sweet is named, that is. If Sweet's not named, that's what I could do. Um, I think I'll wait a week on green. The other thing I could do, if you do the math, it's a little bit different. So if I got rid of someone like, let's say, a Sharp, right, and then you get rid of... I don't know if you can do it with... Sorry, I had an alarm. I don't know if you could hear that. Um, You can't grab Rao with that money, can you? You're like 95K. It wouldn't work. But you could do something like this, but then it means old mate's got to buy the next week, so it would be a little bit annoying. Like I'd rather wait. You know, I can get two more price rises out of Sharp, Green miss next week anyway, and I would have Cardwell playing instead of Green. So Green, uh, Cardwell would get two scores and I could bring Green in a week later. I don't know. I could bring in Green this week, to be honest. But I don't know if it's worth it because he's got the buy the week after and I can get two more price rises out of Sharp. Let's say if Green goes... Let's say Green goes nuts, so then how much money does he make? With, and then how much does Sharp make in between that? So because Green's got his buy next week, I'm not sure if it's worth the panel if you just upgrade your forward line because it's so bad this year. So, um, and then the last spot would be for Zorko, unfortunately. I hate, I hate him as a pick because he's so injury prone, but I think I might have to just bite the bullet. Um, Jeremy Sharp, how much more money can he make? Break even of 30, he gets a 62. You won't go over Mark Sharp, so probably could get rid of him considering. Mm. But Sharp's been just pulling out his 80. So, like, it's, yeah, it's projected for 62, but he's been pulling out an 80, which makes him, what, 400, 410K roughly. Maybe he peaks at that, though. He does got Collingwood and Melbourne next, too. So, something to consider if I go early on trading out Sharp. And fielding Cossie as well, because he's got a wild break even. Although he they play Carlton, so he'd be on the wing. So too many variables to think about. So sorry for stuff around the last five minutes, but that's the side going into the round. V C and C, um, I'm not sure. I'll optimize the side and see what it says. Butters. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a good one. Didn't have to think too much. Butters into Sarong. Who's Sarong play? Why would you captain Sarong when you need the V C Sarong? Uh, yeah, we'll do it like that. Let's see how that looks. What's his history like? Not great, but it doesn't really matter this year. This is a different sarong. Um, they're probably my one and two. Like he's averaging one thirty, he's averaging one twenty four. Dacos was a butcher. Don't trust it. Hmm, I don't have any Essendon players to go against. I'd rather VC Butters, though, against North to see what he can smoke out. Who would I have to captain then if I did that? No one in Geelong, no one in Giants. Gone. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it. I'll have to maybe wait for Ab's captain video or um, who's that? Yeah, Dr. Pig or whatever his name is has captain videos too, and he goes through some captain options. They do a bit more homework with the captaincy, so I just look at the projection um, or their previous, I should say, their previous matchups and what they've done head to head. Um, so I'll work that out later on date and hopefully oh, another Thursday game too. So that's wild. I think we've got Thursday games up until round 16 or something like that. So I'll work out my trades across the day. I am a bit of a last minute Chris Scott trade kind of guy, so I do apologise for that. It's not to catfish anybody. I mean, I'm an 8K rank, so it's not like I'm top 100 trying to catfish or something. Um, and I do post my last-minute trades anyway on uh, Twitter, so if you don't follow me on Twitter, it's SuperCoachPro91. And then I'll probably do – I'll start doing um, YouTube shorts if I do a last-minute trade because I just worked out how to do shorts the other day. I forgot it was even existing. So as per usual, um, I might do a stream tonight uh, to make up for not doing it.
last night, but it would be after 10 p.m. because that's when I knock off. And then, um, yeah, stream with Shorty on the Wednesday night, uh, probably at his, I'd assume. So should be good for that. Um, keen as. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a like and a sub, et cetera. Thank you. Cheers.